So I'm here with Justin, owner of Many Fix Gears, and he let me ride his Bridgestone NJS Anchor on Sunday, and it is literally the smoothest bike that I've ever ridden. This portion of the video is sponsored by Wobby Cycles. From Wobby's own meticulously hand-built wheels to the track lacrosse ready velocity coils to the ever-popular H plus N archetypes laced to your favorite hubs from Phil Wood, Grand Comp, DT Swiss, and my personal favorite, the Suzu Pro Maxes. Top it off with the most reliable tires from Continental and Panoracer, throw in an EAI cog in the flavor of of your choice and your favorite chain from KMC and Izumi and your bike will make your inner fixie kids squeal with joy. So go ahead, check out Wabi Cycles and their component selection linked in the description. So why don't you tell us about it? How did this bike come to be, Justin? All right, so I was actually told by a friend named Ronnie that this frame was too small for him. And he said, it's up for grabs if I'm interested. And I was like, you know what? I would like to have an NJS bike. So. Uh, my friends Justin and Daniel also have a Samsung Illusion and a Machina. And I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll join in. This is how I got the anchor. And um, when I went to go ride it, same thing. It was smooth as butter. You know, I fell in love with it too. I thought it was super cool. He was super, um, like he really wanted me to emphasize the fork. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. He's like, it's a Columbus Max fork. Uh, apparently it's, 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 it's a steel fork that's bladed and I'm like all right that's that looks pretty cool and it's a little unique because it's it's you know there's like the, these blue um uh, you know I guess you can call crowns. them crowns yeah and, and I was like yo all right let's let's do it and you can actually get these from NJS export but it looks like only certain um frames comes with them I guess I, I don't know why it's not as popular when people are really liking the uh, bladed forks but even then I couldn't find anything similar to this and blue and the black it just goes so well so I picked it up and then I um, pretty much got the uh, Dura Ace uh, 7600 crank set on um, I had an opportunity to get the 7710 but I wanted a square taper so that's why that's how I got the uh, crank sets here of course uh, my friend just also uh, recommended me getting the Sugino Zen uh, chain ring um, he actually was one who found the guy selling it and picked it up mind you they're freaking so expensive right now like what the heck <laughs> super toughness chain and uh, just a standard 17 tooth EAI cog with a Durace lock ring um, my friend Daniel actually gave me these I think they're I think he said they were Durace uh, like these bolts right here these could be wrong. even your your nuts are yeah baller and like <laughs> sure I'll take them <laughs> this bike is pretty much the same thing with my other bikes. They're just built through friends. These wheels, I also got it from, uh, from Justin. Put them some bell gems on here, be a little different. Uh, tan walls, I like the tan walls on here. And of course, Andron with Velotrap sold me, he's talked me into getting these like MKS Supreme because they're, they're stamped right there. <laughs> yes. I see it. Uh, they're buttery smooth, but again, I don't, I don't, I think there's a big huge difference yeah but it's there and uh, we made this a little bit different too and try to make it unique uh, we did the uh, I mean yes they are mixed match straps but it's blue and black to match Ooh. the frame is this your first steel frame yes it is <laughs> Dang, that is nice so Tom, how do you how do you like it compared to your other aluminum bikes I realized that it's very um, how do you say it like it absorbs a lot of the impact. Supple? Yeah. <laughs> and I realized there's a different type of uh, tubing. So this one here has the uh, Kaize 8630. And I think you know more about that as well. Yeah. You All, right. All right, let me tell you about Kaize 8630. <laughs> so, steel tubing. It can only get so thin and so light before it just buckles and can't make a bike out of it. Kase 8630 is one of the thinnest steel tubings. It's double butted with 0.7 millimeters at the ends, so it's easier to braise and also adds for the strength at the joints, and 0.5 millimeters in the middle. So it's about, it's about comparable to Reynolds 725 for all you metal nerds out there. And to put that in perspective, how thin 0.5 millimeters is in the middle, that's about as thick same wall thickness as about like 10 human hairs so these things are really nice 
and that uh that thinness in the tubing just is what really makes it supple and absorb all the bumps oh oh what we got here oh what oh <laughs> oh this piece of rubber right here that's oh, oh actually let me take back it's a piece of thin metal that's encased with rubber and uh it's i believe it's um like discontinued and now it's going for like a buttload of money for whatever reason but this is i got this from ronnie as well as a uh one of my birthday gifts thank you ronnie i'm hoping to give you a deal on that oh yeah <laughs> he did. They used to be 40 bucks. How much are they an hour? I think they're going like what? I think a brand new one's like four or 500 bucks. And these are assholes selling it for like eight. I don't... Why don't you be that guy and oh, sell your God. piece of metal and rubber for you $800? See, then this frame will be screwed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but speaking of uh, you know, on the top tube here, I didn't know it was a thing. It's a Dura Ace uh, C post. Um, I got it from my friend Daniel as well, and this one's actually NJS um, stamped. And apparently, Easton is another There's reputable a stamp brand. On my, oh, oh, right, right there. underneath. Yeah. There you go, Easton. I was told that's another that's another like reputable brand. I don't know much about it. Um, I think but, they're American, if I'm not mistaken. Which is kind of strange. I was a Dura Ace and Easton. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> non uh, non Japanese NJS parts are extremely rare oh. because. It's extremely hard to get certified by NGS, and Japan tends to like their own companies and favor them more. And for instance, uh, I think Campagnolo had some, were they cranks or something, that were NGS stamped, and then they only made it for like a year or two because it was just like too expensive to oh. produce them to all the super hard standards to meet the NGS requirement whether it was like actually difficult for them to do or just like not worth it business wise because yeah. all the racers most of them like the uh, Japanese stuff anyway because most of them are Japanese and yeah. Japanese people tend to like Japanese things and also it is uh, they have a very high standard you're right because like uh, I was told like everything is very to spec yeah it has to be very specific it has to be stamped uh, but these hubs there these aren't NJS stamped but when they are, they're like 36 hole or so. Yeah. But going to the front here, uh, I have a Pearl S. There's uh, a stamp, that's what people oh, want to see. Oh, oh, on the other side, oh, on the other side. Non-drive side, NJS <laughs> stamp, where is this garbage? <laughs> I, uh, I want to rise your bars on these. I've seen the NJS uh, drop bars, I, I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> they're very um, aggressive, and there's only like one certain position where you can be comfortable at, I'm like, you know what? I'll just do these. It's not for comfort, it's for fixie points and speed. And the NJS stamp. <laughs> I just wanted something polished to match the yeah. whole bike. So what bars are these? Uh, they're Nittos, but I forget the which 809 or something? I think so. At the very end, too, Nitto bar end plugs with uh, champ rips. Uh, they're actually encased, so we uh, actually I had Andron cut them <laughs> and slap these on. <laughs> Makes no sense, but it looks sick. Hey, it's <laughs> yeah. for the fixie points. I mean, that's what fixies are. They don't make sense, but they look sick. <laughs> yep. Is it an NJS spur cycle bell? Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the people what you just told me. <laughs> Tell them what you just told me. <laughs> <laughs> so technically the stem, I'm supposed to be a 90. <laughs> Millimeter. But because it says the number here, I hate odd numbers. So instead of Pearl 9 or Pearl 11, I was like, screw it. I want a Pearl 10. It's <laughs> the weirdest reason. Hey, but look at it. It looks cool. I'm sure Pearl 9 would look fine. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hit on numbers? I don't know. <laughs> it didn't look right. Okay, how does the 10 fit you though? I think it's fine. It works. Uh, right. I think 11 to be a little too much, but 10 is solid. Fine. Yeah, even even better that it's a 10 and not a 9. <laughs> <laughs> totally just a random saddle here that just, you know, being broke, don't fix it. I really love the specialized, uh, I think it was the uh, expert or specialized. One of them, they make a ton. One of them, there's so yeah. freaking many, but this specific one is, I really like this one, so Specialized I- Specialized saddles are actually severely underrated for how comfortable they are. Yeah, I really like them a lot. I like them too. So you thought about selling this bike, <laughs> yeah. and you came around. <laughs> yes. So what's the story there? 
So I had a couple offers. They're pretty nice offers, but I didn't really want to just sell it to somebody that I didn't really know, especially since it was built with parts from friends and, and retained that, you know, sentimental value. Then um, then over the weekend, we rode it a few times. Like, damn it, this is a nice bike. I, I'm just gonna probably just hold on to it. There's no rush, there's no reason. So this will be the fourth bike I'm gonna just hold on to. So, and my only steel bike, so. I rode this bike for the first time. This is the second NJS bike I've ridden. Just a short, like, five mile thing. And then, even with 25C tires on it, it is still the smoothest bike that I've ever ridden. And part of that has to do with just the loose ball bearing NJS components. It's just super smooth when it's tuned by a very good mechanic, as these were. The bottom bracket, the hubs, super silky smooth. And then the chain ring, okay. Everyone likes all these hipstery chain rings like what I got on my Wabi. And they're great, they're phenomenal. And they look really fantastic. But, do you know Zen chain ring? What are they going for, like 240 or something? I think for a brand new one, yeah. I think you can get them used for like less than 200, but still they're pretty pricey for you. They're really pricey. It's just hands down the smoothest drivetrain that I have ridden on. And you can definitely feel the difference between like one of these, let's call them, uh, boutique chain rings versus a pro level chain ring. There definitely is a difference and it's just completely silent when you ride this bike. It absorbs all the bumps in the road and I am so glad that you decided to keep it because it really <laughs> is a beautiful bike. Thanks man, appreciate it. So uh, should people build up an NJS bike? Steel is real. Steel is yes. real. <laughs> you, you got three aluminum bikes and one steel bike and you're saying steel is real? Steel is real man. <laughs> It's so comfortable. It absorbs everything. And I don't know, something about NJS has that wow factor to me about it. It's different. And uh, wh wherever you go, you're, you'll get, you're gonna get some eyes staring at you like, look at this thing. So yeah, you know, it'll be cool to get one. NJS export. I rate this fixie, this full NJS, I give it more, even if it would be less practical. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why the five gold exists. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 90 fixie point bike right here. <laughs> I forgot to mention, I have the Dura Ace uh, uh, oh, the, uh, cover, dust but, covers. But on the other side, is, it looks better. It's actually <laughs> correctly put on. Oh, okay. I try my best to put it. To line it up. Yeah, I couldn't. And I forgot to mention, I have a how to. Um, uh, bottom bracket as well. Hot bottom bracket, yes, there are ace sir. headset that may or may not need to be adjusted. <laughs> I should do an outro. <laughs> what do you usually do? Shout out my Patreon supporters. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Is anyone you want to shout out, Justin? Me? Yeah. Ooh, shout out to Bella Trap. Happy takeout. And happy takeout, <laughs> Diana and uh, Andron and uh, Madison. Mm. EG Boys, Alex. Your neighbor's dog. <laughs> my neighbor's dog. EG Boys, Alex. <laughs> And um, Justin, I'm still gonna consider Terry as a TG boy, and uh, Daniel, Justin. Damn, you said, you, I, there's I like the six damn Justins. Names. Justin, <laughs> Daniel, Alex, Terry. There you go. There you go. And, uh, and honor. <laughs> oh, and I, I guess. What do you mean honorary? I'm from here. <laughs>